Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. In 1999, NASA's James Hansen was upset that the U.S. had been cooling for 70 years. He wrote, Empirical evidence does not lend much support to the notion that climate is headed rapidly towards more extreme heat and drought. In the U.S., there's been little temperature change in the past 50 years, the time of rapidly increasing greenhouse gases. In fact, there was a slight cooling throughout much of the country. This is what the NASA U.S. temperature graph looked like in 1999. I've circled the years 1934 and 1998. This cooling trend is not what James Hansen wanted to see. When he started the global warming scare before Congress in 1988, he predicted a lot of warming in the United States, but what actually occurred was the exact opposite. So quite predictably, he changed this measured cooling trend into a warming trend by altering the data. This alteration of data started out as a small set of adjustments, only about half a degree Fahrenheit total, and notice that they went flat after the year 1990. The idea was that the data collection methods had become standardized by the year 1990, and there wasn't going to be any need to make any additional adjustments to data after the year 1990. But the behavior of the climate continued to defy Dr. Hansen's predictions, so now the adjustments are much larger. The total adjustments now range by more than two and a half degrees. In this slide, I've overlaid the original adjustments on top of the current adjustments at the same scale. The current adjustments shown in blue are about four times larger than the original adjustments from 2005. Now let's normalize the two sets of adjustments together. Originally, the adjustments were supposed to go flat after the year 1990, but now we have a hockey stick of increased data tampering. In 2005, NOAA showed that the temperature record was stable after the year 1990. So why have they since introduced this huge increase in adjustments? The graph on the left is the same adjustment graph we were just looking at and the graph on the right is carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere over the same time period. Note that the amount of data tampering being done closely matches carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. This gives us a big hint. Now we're going to do a statistical test to see how closely these two curves match. Moving from left to right across the x-axis of this graph shows increased levels of carbon dioxide and moving up the y-axis shows increased levels of adjustments from NOAA. What we're seeing is very good correlation between the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the amount of data tampering which NOAA is doing. The relationship has an R-squared of 0.931, which is very good. It means you can predict the amount of data tampering NOAA is going to do very closely just based on knowing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And the slope of 0 0.02 shows that for every 50 parts per million increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, NOAA increases their adjustments by 1 degree Fahrenheit. In other words, what NOAA is doing is altering the U.S. temperature data to match their failed predictions. Daily maximum temperatures prior to 2008 are adjusted downwards as much as 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And after 2008, they're adjusted upwards by almost an equal amount. Thus, James Hansen's problem from 1999 was solved. The cooling trend in the United States was eliminated by altering the data. The U.S. temperature record is very important because it's the only large area on Earth with a coherent long-term record. In 1895, the U.S. had very good coverage, and there's almost no coverage in Central America, South America, Africa, the Middle East, and much of Asia. Government agencies could fabricate data for the rest of the world, but they couldn't do that for the United States because we had real data here, so the data had to be altered. When there's no thermometer data available, like in 1895 in South America and Africa, what government agencies do is simply make data up. NASA has created this very detailed global temperature anomaly map from 1895 without any actual data to back it up for most of the planet. This is a work of fiction, 
not of science. In places where government agencies have no data, they simply make the data up. And in places where they do have data, they alter it to create the trends which they want to see to push their global warming agenda. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this massive scam for almost 16 years. You can visit him and his family on the web at realclimatescience.com.